Hey everybody, it's Jason with Traveling Astro, and tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about the ASCAR 71 F Flat Field Telescope. I just purchased this probably a couple of months ago. I wanted to tell everybody what I thought about it and let everybody see some results with it, but first I'm going to talk a little bit about build quality here. It has a retractable dew shield. Yeah, it's nice and smooth there. It comes with a rotator on the back here. I'm not sure whether everybody can see this knob right back there, but actually, you know, as far as rotators go, this is one of the best telescopes that I have. It's really smooth. No problem whatsoever there. Um, the best thing about this telescope, though, and one of the things that I look at when I look at telescopes, especially refractors, is how much does the scope cost, but how much does the field flattener cost? They usually get you on that one. With this, it's nothing. Um, I use 55 millimeters back focus on it. Um, you could use, you know, whatever, you know, as long as you can get in focus, this field will be flat on this telescope. Now, it's not like the Red Cat that I have over here to my left out, out of camera, but I'm only using 21 millimeters on that, and you're not going to get in focus with this telescope with that. But a little more, a little less, not going to hurt you there. Has a dual speed focuser. I already have the EAF installed. That took less than five minutes to install that. Uh, the only problem I saw potentially with the scope is the bottom Vixen bar. Once you install this EAF, it can only slide back so far. Now, if you have a mount that it's going to be on where you need to balance, you could have some issues with that. But what all you'll need to do is buy some risers with it so you can slide that back further. On the AM5 here I am using the pure extension with the TC40 tripod it, it would hit the tripod legs. So that is something to be aware of but not a big deal either. You know <laughs> most telescopes with this mount would hit the tripod legs except for maybe the red cat. That one won't. But you know is for $5.99 I think the build quality is great. I did see some people talk about the, the rings on this telescope being too light. To me, I'm not taking the telescope in and out all the time. I see them as perfectly being serviceable. No problem there. And, yeah, if you're anything like me, um, you're already interested in this telescope if you're watching this. I'm more interested in results. What does it do? So tonight, I'm going to be shooting M15, the Pegasus cluster, with it. And I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to be shooting 10 minute exposures for the background and 60 second exposures for the stars. Normally on star clusters I'd only do 30 or 60 seconds, but we want to see if there's anything around it. This telescope's uh, f6.9, but I don't think it'll hurt us. And 490 millimeters and We'll get straight to it. Let's start shooting. Now on M15 I ended up imaging around five hours on it. I would have liked a little bit more, but the conditions deteriorated on me. First, I have a 10 minute subframe taken with the ASI 533 and a UVIR cut filter. Paired with this camera, I wouldn't expect any aberrations in the corners of the images. The stars look good, but this is largely dependent on how well you're tracking with your mount and your guiding. Optics wise though, I really don't see any problems here. Second, I have the stacked results. The only thing applied here is an auto stretch, crop around the edges, background extraction, and blur exterminator. Again, no problems here. Even at f6.9 you can see a little bit of IFN. On this, I ended up just using the stars with the 10 minute subframes. The 60 second frames I thought just ended up looking a little bit weird when I put them in with it. Finally, I have the additive results. Now, I ended up pushing the background maybe a little far on this, but I tend to love IFN. I think a little more time on this, it would really be a cool object to shoot with this scope. I don't think the slower F ratio hurts at all, in fact, 
I like that it's a little bit slower and I tend to think what your pictures show really depends upon the time on your object and as well as your processing. I'll show you guys a couple more images I've taken with a scope. On the left is a Tulip Nebula and narrow band. This does have RGB stars. I imaged this with just over 13 hours of data. On the right is Pallades with a UVIR cut filter, this time with 60 second exposures and just over 4 hours of data so far. Again, great results. I would definitely recommend this scope to anybody. I think for a quadruple at $5.99 it's a real steal and the images from it so far are great. I love the fact that it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. I've imaged with it at this point a fair amount and I've had zero problems with it. Its focal length is comparable to my 80 with a field flattener and that to me is one of the biggest selling points. It also has a slightly smaller footprint than my 80 as well which was always a plus. Ascar has really been putting out decent scopes at good prices and after trying this one I think I'd love to check out others in the future. So thanks for watching and until next time clear skies and go out and take some great images.